Help, 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 help. He might pop out behind us here. <laughs> It'd be actually so hilarious if we're sitting here filming this and all of a sudden you can just see a tom strutting behind us. Can you, could you see it in that, in it? In that one? You could. Yeah, I guess you could right here too. All right, guys. Today, Jake and I are going to be talking about farm country bucks. And we've got this beautiful farm country setting behind us. Uh -huh. I think the thing about farm country is you could talk about it, you know, in a million different ways. Just because, like, farm country here is different than farm country where you grew up. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's a lot of similar stuff, but also different tendencies that they have. Like, I know you guys don't have, like, the big cattail marshes and stuff like that where you're mm -hmm. from. But you have a lot of stuff that's real similar to the upland-looking farm country around here. What do you feel like some of the main challenges are, at least from your experiences in farm country, that maybe are unique to that specific habitat and terrain type? Something I messed up a lot, especially when crops came off. We were parking right where we were set up at, and we were walking across that field right to wherever we were going. And after thinking back and looking back and traveling around a bunch, it's like the deer were just watching us do that for the most part. I mean, we got lucky a couple of times and they must have been bedded somewhere where they couldn't see where we were accessing from. But especially in that flat stuff, they'll get up on the little bit of elevation that there was, especially the bucks. They were watching us come in, I'm sure, and just either just sitting tight and probably not getting up or just go slipping out the other way. But it seems like the bucks specifically too will like isolate themselves from the rest of the deer, especially when it's not during the rut especially early season like throughout the summer and early season it seems like you'll catch them in spots that they shouldn't be you know just like a weird fence line or a small little island that's in the middle of a big field you know where they don't they're not in like the i'm looking at a 15 acre woodlot right there which is probably where a majority of your deer population is going to be and they might be in there sometimes but the places that i've found them more so and especially killed them is just off away from the rest of the deer and those little drainages maybe that run along a waterway that's not you know 10 yards wide 15 yards wide but there's enough cover especially with there being standing crop, uh, corn on you know both sides of it where they feel comfortable there's not a lot of people going back in there it can't be seen from the road and they have you know all the stuff they need to stand up and browse throughout the day right next to water that's where i feel like i've caught you know bucks especially when it's not during the rut i guess overcome it's a challenge that can be overcome but we always want to hunt in the woods as yeah. deer hunters and looking back to my days hunting farm country around where i grew up i'd always want to be in the woods mm -hmm. and i completely overlooked so many areas that were these isolated pockets where looking back on it i think a lot of the bucks were using those a lot of times now we still like I mean, you really going directly to them from wherever they're bet if they're not bedded in there like that's where they're gonna go straight to because that's where probably most of the food is because that and that's where most of the deer are they're gonna go there and meet up and communicate with the rest of the deer just check in on you know who's around what's around and you know go to a bulk of where maybe the acorns and stuff is falling but i feel like especially early season they don't like the stress of having a bunch of other deer around like especially a big buck he's maybe going to be just bedded off with a younger buck or if you're lucky maybe there's a couple big bucks running together and then a pesky little year and a half old buck that's just hanging around them just because that's probably a good idea for him i guess but good learning <laughs> oh no our gopro's down <laughs> i can't believe our bricks fell dude <laughs> <laughs> time out it seems like around here the best time to capitalize on that stuff because when crops come out that might, you know maybe they're using a certain spot that you have permission to which was my case a lot it's like they might be there, you know, until the crops come out, and then they're total. They're around here. They're probably going to some wetland stuff, mm -hmm. or just like a bigger chunk of timber, or they'll bet on the neighbors, and you're just hoping to catch them on a good weather day coming over, to where you got permission to stuff like yeah. that. But I think that's why it's important. I mean, we talk about this all the time, whether you're hunting public or maybe you got permission to farm a bunch of different farmland stuff, or if you don't, you should try to be getting as much as you can. I'd say just to for one keep the pressure off of spots if you can't you know the more you can bounce around the, the less pressure you're, you're gonna have to put on certain spots i feel that one of the other challenges of farm country is finding enough places to participate like yeah. when i was a kid it was pretty competitive in that immediate area but then there was a few places where i could go but so could everybody else and i feel that one thing that i regret and just getting more experience hunting um, in different areas. When I look back on those days, one of the things that I really wish I would have done is just committed a whole bunch of time in the off season to finding as many opportunities to 
go hunting as I could. Even if it didn't look that good, that good, like you said, there's certain times of the season or yeah, if it's certain, butts, if it's within you know a couple hundred yards or even, even a couple miles, miles yeah, yeah, of something that's good or between two places that are really good. I mean, if you live in farm country, you've probably seen it. A buck just tearing off across the middle of the field. I mean, just put a decoy out and sit and wait. I mean, that mm-hmm. might be your best option. You could definitely get eyes on stuff too, especially if you're just thinking a little bit outside the box. I mean, just getting 50 yards up on a knoll where you. You know, you can't see the spot from the road, but then you just walk up to a little higher spot or something like that. Like a couple other things that came to mind when you were saying that, like also take advantage of man-made structures like silos or I mean, we even talked about getting up on a water tower over by your place. <laughs> like there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to get yourself elevated and even make an observation sits. I mean, especially like we're talking about in flat farming country like that, you get 20, 30 feet in some of these spots. I mean, you're going to be able to see a mile plus. Mm-hmm. So definitely having good optics too yeah makes a difference like it would probably be worth saving up for a spotter at some point and getting something where you can mount it to your window on your vehicle vortex makes a nice little thing that i've Mm -hmm. been using a lot and then a tripod also it's like you're going to be able to probably pick out bucks that are bedded down in little pockets when the crops come off that you never see otherwise you know bedding bedding though i do want to i do want to kind of focus on that for a minute because i feel like it is just so different waterways is one that you've mentioned multiple times i think if you could get a grassy waterway yeah. one that's not mowed one that has water in it yeah. actually some of my favorite spots early season too are like a fence line with a drowned out spot in like a cornfield where you know that's just you know you got a 10 foot barrier and then in this in these wet spots a lot of times there's just all sorts of different broadleafs that grow up you know just because the corn doesn't come up so there's that's not all canopied out and you'll just get a variety of different plant types growing up in those drowned out spots and they can be an acre plus a lot of times you can just tuck right into that corn and be sitting in the standing corn and that gets pretty intense because you're hearing deer coming through the corn Mm -hmm. another thing that came to mind when you mentioned fence rows is in a standing corn situation if you've got a fence row that runs through it get corn on either side of it especially if you can pair that with obviously water is a factor but also oak trees that are dropping acorns i feel like that is just money and it allows you to have early season they got shade with those big oaks too and they may shift their bedding around during the day so even a middle of the day hunt in those situations can be beneficial because they may be following that shadow like Mm -hmm. it, it just also allows you to have another option of a place to hunt that may not be good one year at the same time though it's like i think bean fields around here they'll bet in the bean fields during the summer around here and probably into season some but then I'm, i get to thinking about like when we were in kentucky mm-hmm. those deer were bedded i mean and the beans were taller than any beans i'd ever seen the other about up to my neck you know five foot tall beans which is pretty wild to think about but i mean imagine how cool that is for a deer to be out in a bean field in the shade with the breeze blowing them you know on them and they can just stand up throughout the day and i mean all you can see is their neck if they get you know like like where we were hunting at there's a lot of fields that were far far from the road Mm -hmm. and that's where warb ended up killing that buck but there was a whole bachelor group of them out there and we found several others too in that area that we were hunting where deer just bedded right in you know where they're feeding in the afternoon just kind of following that shade around maybe there isn't a tree on the whole place but it you know if if you're driving past you see deer out there or you know you know there's good habitat that sets up right next to if it's standing corn you don't need a tree you got a a hundred acre ground blind right (laughs) there you can sit wherever you want and that standing corn slips through that and be set up right along the edge of it (laughs) i mean there's been a couple times several different times where they just think i'm another deer and they're coming in to fight me, you know. It's like, and I think when you're doing that too, don't you don't need to look at it as, as like the, 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 there's a hundred acres there. They could be anywhere. I mean, you can kind of look at your map and tell like there's. I know there's a lone tree in that corner, and then they're gonna be. They're not gonna just just walk out into the middle of that thing for the most. They're gonna part get lost. It. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason I think they use those trees is they're using it as a visual cue to a beacon, say, yeah. yeah, I'm going there, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing you see in like uh, a marsh or yeah. I mean you can see that on a map uh, on aerial image in a marsh where they go straight to the trees yeah. and the buck that Ted shot in Oklahoma 
that was kind of farm country. Yeah. There's this little tree, and that all those deer were going right to it. Ted just went and sat underneath of it yeah. and shot the buck out in the wide open otherwise, yeah. but there he went to that tree. Yeah. Same thing goes for a cornfield. Just be looking at your map. I mean, you'll be able to tell where the low areas of the field are, where there's like a, maybe a pocket of trees or something like that, and those would be the areas that I'd probably gravitate towards to start. But yeah, I think relating it to some sort of additional cover is going to be helpful because again that's also going to be an added food source like we mentioned the oaks earlier but there's all kinds of opportunities on an edge where even looking just right here i mean you got some more variation in plants Mm -hmm. and i think when you add that to the mix it's just more enticing for them because they can feed on multiple things throughout the day yeah deer don't like to just eat one thing i mean even that buck that you killed in north dakota great farm country example where this deer goes lays out in the middle of the what was that stuff called canola, canola. Mm-hmm. let's forget that mm-hmm. we don't have that where i grew up <laughs> that buck would bed there but what you had observed was just that he was going to get a little something, bit something else a little different salad over yeah. here right on the edge of that corn yep i think that funnels are kind of an interesting topic in farm country because they can look kind of unique i think there are funnels that are in the middle of a field, yeah. if that makes sense. Like one thing I was thinking about was deer's, a big buck's ability and willingness to use the low spot in the field where he could walk what looks to be the wide open. And I've been thinking about that too. Like even here, there's enough roll right there, mm-hmm. especially in that corner right behind you. There's enough roll right there where a deer could sneak straight from that woodlot into that thicket right there and just keep on moving in broad daylight. And even if you were looking right at it, he, you wouldn't see him. Yeah. A lot of times they would cut basically from the woodlot. They'd be coming from the CRP type stuff back there, but they would cut out of range basically of all the trees there. And on a west wind, they'd just be kind of walking right downwind of a lot of that woodlot, you know, because I'm sure people were hunting there. But they'd be out in that open, getting downwind of all that stuff, and walk right into it. I mean, broad daylight, because we hunt. I mean, I used to hunt back in there, pretty much all that stuff. If you're willing to get out of the stand too in mm-hmm. farm country, it's a pretty huge opportunity. Maybe more than about anywhere, because again, if you take the trends of what the majority of hunters are doing in a specific area, one thing that's definitely consistent where I grew up is there's a ton of tree stands in the timber yeah but you get outside the timber and nobody's hunting in those yeah i mean places. you can pretty much take any field corner around here and you're going to expect there to be some sort of stand in it and the deer if he's got any size to him they i'd like to think they know about most of that so they're going to have stuff that they do to that they're checking basically before they're going to put themselves at risk like like i said swinging downwind of all of the trees that someone could potentially be in then then going in it's like they know they're safe. There ain't nothing that you're going to do to beat their nose. No. I mean, you got isolated cover. you got hunters that are habitual. you got a buck that lives out there every day of his life. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to do a lot of convincing and a lot of, uh, a lot of studies or some scientific proof to make me believe that they don't know exactly where all that stuff we leave in the woods as hunters is. Mm-hmm. I, there's just, I don't know, feel I pretty mean, I, strongly I follow my point. dog around enough to know that, like, as much as what she picks up on it's interesting to see you know to know a deer can smell better than that it's like well because he has no choice but to be in right. like that's his life is just trying to survive i mean i guess that's what everybody's trying to do but not as many things are trying to kill us as that or as they're trying to kill a white-tailed deer or turkey or whatever yeah other than the government <laughs> <laughs> well they just flew by the whole scene by <laughs> checked out what was going around going on around here and then hit the gas <laughs> That's what I like to think at least. <laughs> We're here. Y'all are y'all are doing okay. <laughs> and another thing I wanted to talk about too before we wrap things up is decoys. When crops do come out, that's that's when the decoy comes and I'm sure Greg's just got a ton of footage of that. But I mean anywhere where you know you i mean a deer can I mean, see honestly, it honestly you could probably just set up right here with a decoy in the right situation you get a buck fired up enough yeah you never know mm-hmm. i mean you can get a little bit more lenient just with be, your setup get it out there you know wherever the wind makes sense for you where they hopefully can't get downwind of you and then be ready to call at them as soon as they should be able to see that decoy just make sure you got stuff where you can get loud enough where they can hear you mm-hmm. get get your rattling antlers get your grunt call and 
I mean, be ready. To, if you're in a tree, I'd have some stuff tied up to like a string to make some sort of ground noise because they're going to sit there and look at it for a good while if they've been called at for a while. But, the, you know, the more realistic you can sound and if you can get a decoy out there, that'll a lot of times sell them, it seems like. And that's a pretty fun and effective way to get them in bow range and a spot like that where it's just like, I mean, he could just be cruising across the middle of that field, and there's not really a great reason for him to go in anywhere specific. And, but if you can throw a decoy out in front of you, that definitely can increase your odds, I'd say. Yeah, and I think something else that I was thinking about that is worth noting, too, in farm country is obviously fields are kind of a clean slate when it comes to finding tracks. I think that's something that... As far as scouting goes, we talk about rubs and scrapes and stuff all the time, but just simply finding tracks. And I actually was talking to Andy May a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling a story about a buck that he shot in Michigan and stuff that I'm visualizing being pretty dang similar to this around here. And yep. He talked about how he was trying to find where that buck was moving from one woodlot to the other. He was just finding these big tracks going across the middle of a field, and therefore when he picked his setup, he was within range of that yep. big buck track going across the field. And it's like you think about all the situations where you find tracks going into a spot, especially in stuff like this, and it's like, well, you know, maybe he is running through the middle of that field, but, you know, if you can find any way to intercept him along the way, and, I, and again, if you can get and are willing to get out of the stand – then I think that opens up even more opportunities because maybe he's crossing a little waterway where you can tuck down in some grass or a little bit of willow brush or something like that. And I, I really like that idea of tracks. And you can check a lot of these spots that we've talked about, like maybe a transition between corn and a fence row or even just entering and exiting fields in general. I feel like that's a huge starting point right? Like, again, I'm always thinking of it from the standpoint of not having trail cameras. Like, how do I know one's there? Well, mm -hmm. I want to look down that edge and just say, okay, you know, these trails and these are mostly does coming out of here, but that's the buck trail. You find his track going in and out of there and you can use that to your advantage. Yeah. And in a state like this, you can spotlight at mm -hmm. night. I mean, use that to your advantage for sure. Absolutely. I mean, you can cover a lot of ground and not have to put any sort of scent in whatever area you're hunting and learn a lot about what's going on you know an hour or even a couple hours after dark and you know just is there anything else i suppose i guess for me there's a million things about farm country that make it fun and unique and have these extra challenges and i feel that it's probably a topic that we should try to keep ta talking about yeah, yeah we, i think we could pick us part more specific topics like we could just talk about act i guess the first thing i think about is access mm -hmm. it's like how careful you got to be with that just no one you could be seen from several hundred yards away and how much I missed like just driving around all these spots I used to hunt just thinking about all the deer that I probably sent running the other way or just because sent laugh, the laughing the other field, way just like yeah here not, we go not to my stand yet so mm -hmm. I, I mean I used to do the same thing yeah and I, I think I mean most people do I mean I see we see people do it mm -hmm. I mean you drive you'd be driving down the road and be like oh boy we just saw you were people line. doing it turkey yeah. the other day there was some turkeys out in the field yeah. Well, there were turkeys in the field, and then they started walking across the field towards yeah. where they were, and they weren't just be thinking out about there. what the animals can see from where you anticipate them to be bedded for starters, I guess, and then think outside the box, um, think about areas you can't see from the road. Where goes that bird along the back there? <laughs> oh, turkeys. Here we are talking about we're forcing it talking about deer right now too, everybody we really just <laughs> no i'm turkey. starting to get fired up back up about it it's i'm fired up about it yeah. because i didn't get the turkey hunt that much uh -huh. but trust me when i see that turkey <laughs> i start thinking man i wish it was still turkey season but i think that uh if you guys have any questions leave questions in the comments or anything that you would like us to dive into more detail about because i think this is something that we both enjoy talking about because yeah. we had so many experiences and, and Greg as well yep. a and Aaron. I mean, really all of us hunted a lot of farm country as kids. Yeah, we all really sure. did grow up. In and we also country. just did a bunch of short uh, tip videos for the deer school too, where we talked about, honestly, we talked about a lot of different things than what we talked about today. So that's good, I guess. So check out the deer school too. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching everybody. 
and feel free to yeah send your suggestions our way about farm country or any other topics you'd like to hear and we'll catch you on the next one